Now I get lost in Instagram where I'm just, now I'm just searching, now I'm watching content, now I'm on this, now I'm on that. Now for some reason I'm watching every funny gospel video. <laughs> I'm like, bro, after a while I'll be like, what am I how doing? I yeah, how here? did I get here, bro? All I did was try and answer a couple messages. Bruh. And now, you know what I'm saying? Like, now I don't know who I am. <laughs> now it's dark outside. Real talk. You're hungry. I'm like, man. Straight up, I got a headache. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My kids is right next to me, knocked out. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Welcome to season two of Iman Amongst Men, the show that takes an honest look at what it is to be a man in today's world. We don't shy away from topics most people are too afraid to talk about. We're going to take it all the way there. It's season two, y'all. Let's get it. Welcome to Iman Amongst Men, presented by Uninterrupted. I am Iman Shumpert. Today we are joined by 2023 NAACP Image Award winner, stand-up, comedian, uh, author, podcaster, producer, and director. <laughs> Kev on stage, one time, everybody. It sounds like so many things when you list them off like that. Start realizing who you are right before your very like, damn, that is me. That's, that's out, me. That's, that is me. That's that's crazy. the journey though. That's, that's beautiful. Crazy. That's the that's the journey though. That's kind of like what we was just scatting on. Anyway. Yeah, just yeah. Just like falling into all these things, you don't realize what it is. Right, like, right. You just living. Believe it or not, Shaman, this is no joke. I thought I was going to the NBA. Word. See, everybody laughs. I don't know what it's because you <laughs> funny. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Dog, I told my kids that, and you, I mean, they might have well had Eddie Murphy doing stand up. They <laughs> thought it was so funny, but I was a dead set going to the league in yeah. my mind. I used to play AAU, and I'll never forget. And we don't have to talk about this. It's no, just you funny. You talk about falling into stuff. Real talk. I mean, I like. I thought it was funny, but I'm like, I'm going to the NBA. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you had bangs. Oh, you but, no, good. no, I don't. Listen, there was a reason why I didn't go. But in my <laughs> mind, I should have sure. went. So I went to a tryout. It was like Division Three. It was like Pinewood College, right? Well, I was guarding this white boy. He like 5'9". I'm like, oh, right. this nigga, I can't. Right. I got this nigga on me. Right. When I tell you, cooked. Nasty. Oh, he was cooking. He was yeah. strong. He met this. See, cooking me, crossing me, and I'm really getting crossed. Yeah. I'm like, his hair like a little bowl cut. Three, three. He didn't he look like he could go me. like that. Bro, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm a guard a big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can get with him. Dunk, dunk, yeah. dunk. Like he wasn't even dunking like yeah, that. I was gonna say guard the big. Is, yeah, I guard the dude who's 6'10. Why? Because you know I'm, I'm not getting cooked no more. Yeah. I know I can't keep up with him. Who you finna out rebound a sixteen? I just I couldn't keep doing this. <laughs> out on the perimeter, it seemed more obvious stuff. Oh, it's dangerous out there. Yeah. We call it the island. You yeah. get out there on that island. Yeah. So after that, I was like, okay, so basketball ain't that ain't for me. That's not for me. Let me do something. It get else. funny out here and, now. <laughs> let me focus on another skill. At least I know, and that's for me. As long as I know I can do that, I can live with that. Yeah. I can't live with not knowing. You know what I'm saying? So once I knew, I was like, let me go. I'm funny. Let me Word. let me focus on that. The thing of today's episode <laughs> is being undeniable. <laughs> How would you define being undeniable? Man, I think for me, especially in this industry, it's really about like, they gonna tell you no over and over and over, yeah. right? So how do you keep like pushing forward in an industry that's designed to reject you? You know what I'm saying? So mm. for me, it's like, you're just, you know, it's kind of like the Rocky Balboa mindset like he wasn't the best boxer he had no defense but he just kept getting up so when, when you know you know Paulo Creed and Drago would knock him down he would get up and they'd be like dog like you supposed to be done why are you why are you still boxing like you should be knocked out you should be dead and he keeps getting up and I think for me that's what it's really about it's like okay this didn't work okay bet let me try it this way okay that didn't work okay bet I ain't getting no auditions. Okay, let me uh, let me make enough money to make my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to pitch that. Okay, y'all don't want that. Okay, so how can I how can I still get my own way in? I think it's just I'm not really letting nobody tell me no, mm -hmm. right? You can tell me no, and you can only control your method, right? But if I build my own audience, you can't tell me no to my stuff, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's really what's been like the last ten years of just not letting Hollywood tell me no. Because first I was living in Washington. And you can't even be in this industry if you weren't in yeah, Hollywood, exactly. right? So I'm like, okay, well, the internet's becoming more of a thing. Let me let me get big on the internet. That way I can have fans everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So if I get big there, then they have to- you Gotta respect they it. They gotta respect it. You know what I'm saying? So that's really where that Kev on stage came from. Like, I wanna uh, build a platform big enough that you have to respect me. You have to at least talk about me uh, when it comes time to do things. 
if you if you saying like it took a while to build that, how do you go about that? Like how do you how do you make that decision to say, you know what? I got to do this another way and this is how I'm going to do it. Like was it a plan executed or did it sort of just roll into that? Like, so, uh like we was talking before, I was working at Boeing mm -hmm. and I'm watching a lot of YouTubers. You I'm watching Issa Rae, I'm watching Dorm Tame, Spoken Reasons, uh Tim Chanarangsu, he was delegate at the time and I'm like, okay, they are I thought they were all rich. It didn't turn out they they weren't all, but some of them were getting real money. So I'm like, they doing sketches and stuff and I'm like, I don't have no money for that. I don't even know how to edit those things at all. Right. So I can't do that. So what can I do? And I saw a dude, Ray William Johnson, he had like, he would be on one side of the video and he would talk about something on the other side of a video. And I'm like, okay, I could do that. Like, I don't need no huge team to Copy. do that. Copy. So I'm like, first I'm like, I'm gonna That's do- That's like the remix things? Yeah, Copy. exactly, yeah. So I'm like, I used to have business cards that said new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I gotta do it every single day. Like in my mind, I was gonna be like a, like a cartoonist. I used to read the newspaper and you had a cartoonist, you have the Sunday Times, and you have the the color cartoons and all that, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you had them, you go to the, the funny section of your newspaper mm -hmm. and they would turn in a comic every day. Mm -hmm. Some were funny, some were just okay, but you could go every single day and 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 read something that they drew, they made. Right. So my plan was like, I'm just gonna get on base a lot. Like, you know, in, in baseball they teach you, don't try to hit home runs, just try to make contact. You go Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Uh, just make contact. That's what they teach you? That's what they teach you in baseball. Like, you try to hit a home run, you're more likely to strike out. That's some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I, hey, hey, I, I don't teach baseball, but let's hear. <laughs> I, I give me a son and he play baseball. You hit we, for we, Yes. You aiming for that over the, hit my car. Hit the car. <laughs> Fuck the ball. Hit the car. Exactly, hit the fucking car so we can get right. right. Righteous out here. You tripping, man. Well, I, I wish like, a coach would say that to me. I took contact. my son off the team. Make contact. Make contact. Cause you, you make mean. contact, it might, you might hit it you perfect. You should make contact anyway. What you mean, make contact? You better blast that shit out of here. Tell my son to make contact. No, nah, I'm playing, y'all. If y'all play baseball, my bad. Keep teaching your son the right way. I always shot a ball into a net. So right, fuck, right, fuck right. Fuck what I said. <laughs> so yeah, now my thing was just like, I'm just gonna inundate you with content. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna have to ignore me. You're gonna have to block me. Because if you don't follow me, I want other people to retweet my videos or post it on their stories. Mm -hmm. Like, and do people do block me. I don't know why, but I be finding out people be blocking me and stuff. Yeah. And that's okay. But my thing was about the vortex. Like, I'm just going to keep making videos. I'm going to talk about everything trending. I'm going to talk about everything that's important to me. I'm going to talk about nostalgia. I'm going to talk about music. I'm going to talk about movies. Mm -hmm. Something's going to hit your timeline. And you're going to be like, oh, this dude's funny. I done seen him five, six times. Unless they make a decision on it. And, and that's it. Like, And then when people follow you, like they see you, they want to see that you've been doing this. Because a lot of people who make content, they are hit and miss. And they don't realize users look at your page and see, are you really making content like that? Or is this a one-off? So if you go to my page, come hell or high water, I'm gonna have something up. And if I ain't got nothing, I'm gonna post somebody else funny and be like, at least something funny's going up. You know right. what I'm saying? So on the weekends, I'll be like, Sundays, I'll, I'll shout somebody chill else out. out. You know yeah, what I'm chill saying? out, I'm like y'all work. <laughs> trying to chill today. But yeah, that's been my plan. And then I just wanna build that audience. And then I wanna, you know, transition that audience with me to TV and movies and things like that. And I feel like that's my next step. But that's, you gotta learn a whole nother, you know, industry to be good at that too. Or one of the largest aerospace companies, Boeing. Yes. Going from working there, talk about the journey. What's the biggest takeaway from the journey of, <laughs> is it that realization of, I don't wanna do this for eight hours? Well. Like what's the biggest takeaway from that journey? I feel like one of the biggest ones for me was like, are you sure you wanna do this? Cause you can, I can complain about that job a lot, right? But every other Friday that check hit my account. For sure. So I quit Boeing and moved here, I'll never forget this. The first day we got here, we saw Kobe play because it was he was gonna retire that year. And we didn't really have bread like that. And my wife was really mad. She like, we really should be doing this. And I was like, I'm sorry, but Kobe gonna retire. I gotta see him. And that next Friday, and we spent, we was in the rafters. That next Friday, when that direct deposit didn't hit, that's when I was like, ooh, like we really out here and they ain't gonna send me no more money, mm -hmm. like just cause I don't work. So the biggest thing for me is like, you really gotta figure out how to get money coming in because this industry you you might have a good three months six months you might have a good year two three years 
But then them calls start, you know, slowing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you going to get that money going? How are you going to be an engine for yourself? And I think that's probably the biggest difference between Boeing and this is like, I have to generate every dollar I make right now, mm -hmm. you know, in some way. I don't just, I don't have like a, I do work and somebody sends me a consistent check and I know for four or five years I'm going to be good. You know, you're basically uh, unemployed until you're unemployed. You know what I'm saying? Denzel always talks about like, I'm unemployed most of the time. I just get paid really well when I have a job. But after three months, I'm unemployed again. And for a lot of people, that's the thing. Like, do you have what it takes to make that happen day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out, when you got to come up with it on your own? And I feel mm -hmm. like that's the biggest difference between the safety of a nine to five. And that's not a derogatory thing about a nine to five. Like people are like, man, you shouldn't do nine to five. It's, it's great for a lot of people. And I had a nine to five for a large portion of my career. You know what I'm saying? Still had a nine to five while I was making those videos. Nine to five helped me pay for my first tour. Nine to five gave me health insurance. Like, Straight up. So I think that's the thing, like the mindset of I'm going to walk away all the way and and make it work. Because that corporate America, they, they'll they give you that check. And it's a lot of safety and security in that. And a father with wife and kids and mortgage and health insurance, my kids looking at me like, I don't care how you get it, but I want a Capri Sun in there when I open the fridge. Straight up. And they looking at you like, you know. Make it happen, Captain. Make it happen, bro. I don't care. Like, you got laid off. You, you got told, fired. You told me to be here. You, <laughs> right? I can't make no money. I showed up. Right. So I want a Capri Sun and a lunch bowl. It should be in there. You know what I'm saying? So I got to make sure that's in there. What type of strain does that put on you? What type of pressures does that put on your wife at that time? A uh, huge amount on both of us, right? She she was kind of, she's always been the like support, the rock. So when I'm trying to chase these dreams, she's she's working a regular nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that, you know, if it all falls away, at least we have this. But at the same time, we are married in a time where we don't, it's a two parent two income type of world. For sure. This ain't 1940 when the man goes to work and comes home and you cook. No, nah, oh, no, not at all. With the prices of today, I need, you know, I we got you to. You needed her anyway, whether <laughs> you had the other job or not. It's like, I need you. <laughs> I need you. I need you. I love you. Love you. Love that you're here. I love that. I love that. what you do. <laughs> I support everything. I love what you do. Don't you ever get that fucking. Bruh. I love you in everything you do. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, for real, we for in real. this together and that's yeah. why like as i've had success it's it's so easy to share because like she there wouldn't be no success if i didn't have that support mm. financially first right like that's just not first but like that's one yeah, but then, that's like, the most important thing when you talk about kids <laughs> right. Gee, we got love funny when the we kids are love. hungry bro <laughs> talk. we got love what a fool <laughs> We got love. Where's Bruh, the food? Daycare bills and stuff. Straight like, up. Bro, I remember for the majority of our marriage, man, our daycare bill was more than our mortgage yeah. or our apartment. Yeah. I'm like, I had got fired one time. And I remember I got fired. And I counted up how much money I made and how much we paid in daycare. And I was like, low key. I mean, all I was really was doing was working <laughs> to, for to pay for daycare and like 300 more. Like daycare was killing us. You know what I'm saying? So it's real. Yeah. So she's been like a financial support. She's been like, I love her. She's been a friend. She's been a business um, tycoon. She's really good business mind. She has good foresight. So I wouldn't be where I am without her. And I won't go wherever I'm going to go without, without her beautiful. either. And I wouldn't even want to. Like, I think about that a lot when it comes down to a choice of like, do you want to do this? Do you want to stay with your family? Like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my big dream, obviously, I want to make it. But I don't want to make it so much that when Thanksgiving comes around, my kids don't want to come visit me. Yeah. Or I'm in a big house all alone. Like, that's not making it to me. Okay. That would be that would be losing it. So even though I had a billion dollars, but my kids don't really rock with me and I'm divorced. Yeah. To me, then I've I've lost. Because no money can repair love and family and all that type. But you know, I know a lot of people with money, but they're not always happy. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't want to be in that position where I have money, but I don't have somebody to play uno with because when Whoa. we're broke man we uno will get you through <laughs> i seen the cards are bent up and you know this one's the yellow nine because it's ripped so you gotta you gotta hold it upside down <laughs> like we've been broke we had a oh great time Lord. being broke right so i don't want to get so yeah, much it's not a lot to... of pressure we broke bro we ain't got nothing no <laughs> What else we gonna do? What we, bills we got? Dog, we used to meet at the park because we ain't got no money for nothing else. Real Yo, talk. we gonna be at the park in Parkland. Y'all be there two o'clock. 
bring the hot dogs, I'll bring the grill. A whole bunch of broke friends can make time. one great picnic. You know what I'm Just a good time. Just a good time, man. Real talk. <laughs> What's it like having your wife in the public eye as well? Uh, it's tough for her a lot of times because that wasn't her dream, right? She wanted and it and loved working nine to five. She was like, her dream was to be like a power lawyer walking down the street in Wall Street. Like she loved working in corporate America, we loved working at Boeing. She worked in aerospace after that. She was fine with that. The thing about the public eye that's hard to explain to people who are not visible like that, people be analyzing your life, your choices, your decisions, uh, things like safety wise, you can't, you know, you can't, you know, you can't post while you're at a place because people pull up on you. Like she didn't really sign up for that. Mm -hmm. And she kind of feels like because she's my wife, she got to make content. Right. And she's like, I don't really like that ain't really me. So she goes through phases where I don't really feel like doing this, really but I feel like I have to. And Kev is doing it and everybody else around me. So it's like that push and pull where she's like, if we sell a TV show or a movie and I don't have to do this no more, I'm yeah. done. Copy. I'm like, <laughs> I'll go behind the I'll camera. I'll go behind the scenes. For sure. Take care of my kids, take them to soccer. Like, she'll easily do that if, well. if, if, if we get to that point. So that's what I'm trying to get to the point of. How is it ha having her help you with the books? Oh, man. I I can't even. Because y'all both got to enjoy that. No matter uh, how much you don't want people in your business, you put out a book, man. You got to love that, bro. Yeah, it was really amazing, man. Like, First of all, the book wouldn't have got done without her. Mm. It was just me. I would. It, it's a lot of work. Like even with a ghostwriter, it's an hour and a half once a week for like a year, and they're asking for more and more stuff, bruh. It's a lot. And she's like, "We need a thousand more pages, or, or a thousand more words. We need five thousand words here." I often said a thousand more pages. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Nice and book. I'm like lady, this is our whole life. I don't know nothing else. Yeah. I don't have no more life. Like. <laughs> Nothing. There's nothing left. No more life is crazy. No, that's it. I'm gonna have to lie. I don't want to tell that. So I want to make up a book. I can't make it that more. No. More so now nah, having her was instrumental. We I wouldn't have finished it without her. To make the New York Times bestselling list was amazing as well because like we really worked hard on the book. The, the the book was her idea. The cover was her idea. The chapters were her idea. You know what I'm saying? She did the heavy lifting. All I got to really do is color in the lines, be yeah, funny and stuff. And exist. And exist. You know what I'm saying? So it was an amazing achievement. And to be able to share in the win with her, because a lot mm -hmm. of times it's like she supports me and I get the visibility, but the book was something we both did. And to get the recognition of the New York Times bestselling for something we both worked on mm -hmm. was like, okay, so here you're finally getting your shine. Real talk. And it's not supportive shine. Like as your own creative, your own artist, your own hard work and stories, you're getting your own shot. And too. I'm here for your comfort zone. Nah, I'm here. I'm here. I could be Barack and Michelle. Like, I did my thing. Now it's time to support you. Oh, I can me, do it. I do that. it all the time. I'll be like, hey, bro, <laughs> I don't have to take you, not one picture. I'll stand over here. She'd be like, you, you don't, why you ain't taking the picture? I'm like, I ain't, that's a lot of cameras. That's We've been taking pictures for 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes, 15 minutes, picture. 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm right. I'm like, you could do this all day. You got every pose in the book. Right. Live it up. Right. Live it That's up. That's why we took pictures over here. It was oh, yeah. two minutes. I'm yeah. like, ah, ah. this is what I'm talking about. Ah, cha, cha, ah, ah. <laughs> you was like, boom, got it. Boom, boom. I'm gone. Got it. We done in five minutes. Got it. Swear that's my face. Bro. <laughs> they go, they come back there, look at the camera. All okay, right, do it again. Do it again. Right. Nope. I ain't do all that to put these shoes on for it to look like that. Nope. Do it again. Do it again on the good yeah, camera, but man. I, uh, I I definitely get that. It's it's a it's a wonderful feeling to see your wife put on a cape, so to speak, right? And get that shine and get right. that that Superman moment. And you, you know? want to you want to return that favor for sure. Like I don't want to always have her it's supporting like, me. Like and that was behind the scenes. It's and, like yeah. that's behind the scenes when you're building a brand and somebody's helping. Thousand percent. It's like it's such a behind the scenes support. It's like I don't want to have to do this up here on the yeah. podium. Yeah, like, behind the scenes. It's like no, nah, this is dope. This, this is, is your in your moment. face. Yeah, you like Cordy B. Vance, Angela Bassett be and stuff he'd be recording real time he'd, he'd be happy leaving. happy as hell. let me just record it for i ain't got to be up there i don't it's like to moment. look at me that good right a, like i like looking at my wife be up there like right. you, I got got it, you, honey. you got it you're doing amazing you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they know i'm here yeah they know i'm here they know i'm here that's enough that's enough for me that's a thousand enough. percent uh is there anything uh that you learned in marriage uh in that process of just just merging brands period oh man if i could be honest and i hate to tell the truth no we love to tell the truth here uh I'm, how do i say this 
I don't know everything. What do you mean? Like, what made me Kev on stage was I was like putting my head down and working, mm -hmm. right? She was doing her thing at her job, and I'm working too, but I'm like, I'm making videos, I'm making videos, making videos. And I didn't have to put nothing past nobody. Like, it's my idea, I'm gonna shoot it, make it, edit, post it. I'm doing that. So, as we get into bigger ventures, mm -hmm. I have to share that information, right? You spending more money, like a lot of money to us, I can't just put my head down and go to work. Like, we have to have a conversation about this. We gotta talk about this. What's the marketing plan? And the more I talked to her, the more I realized, oh, I just was doing, even in my failures, it was, I was only one to blame. So if I messed up, it's like, well, it's my fault. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when I have to defer to her and 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 defer to other teammates, I'm like, oh, Kevin, you, you, you know a lot, but you don't know everything. And you just want to bull force ahead. You're going to just run through a wall. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, but you don't, you, yeah, your head's bleeding. You got a concussion. Like, you just took a second and stopped and just look, there's a door over there. Real talk. I'm like, nah, I'm going to just jump over it. Now I done tore my ACL. Yeah, sure got, like, she's just like, take a second and just think. And I'm like, nah, you, you don't believe in me. I, I could make it. You know, my real dad wasn't there. I'm going to show all of them. And like, ain't nobody said all that. Ain't Calm nobody down. said all that. Why you got it? Why I got to always go from zero to 60? Don't, right. don't nobody love me. You know, ain't nobody said all that. There's usually one passionate. Yeah, passionate person like yeah. in a relationship. There's usually one person that's like off the deep end. Yeah, with it. it's usually the guys most pumped. Yeah, like you just get. I used to get like that with basketball. Yeah, you, know, you just get something. She be like, "Just chill, just chill." I'm right here. Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> so, learning that I can take a beat mm -hmm. and listen and plan and strategize, and everything can't be done over sheer will like sheer will got me a lot of places but now strategy and patience timing relationships partnerships are going to get me where i want to go but i'm impatient um stubborn i'm ambitious and usually that comes out with like i just got to go now yeah. if i don't do it now somebody else is going to do it and she's like but also if you do one thing really well it'll set up the rest of your life mm -hmm. but you're really gonna have to take your time and do it so you don't have to, you know, like, I'm gonna tell you what she hit me in between the chest, right? Like, I wanna make a movie, man, I'm gonna show Hollywood, I'm gonna show Hollywood. She's like, do you have a plan, strategy, marketing, investment, or do you really just wanna be seen doing something? And I was like, up. I had to I had to take a shower. I had to I like- had to think this through. I had to sit down and really be like, what What do I, why, why am I doing this? Cause she like, you just spent, a lot of money on the last thing. And you ain't even like seeing how far that could go. And you're on to the next thing. Do you wanna be spending that type of money all the time? Do you even have a plan? Even if you, if somebody wanted to hand you a million dollars to make it, do you have a way to prove to them that here's how you're gonna give them their money back? And I really didn't have it. And to really be honest and know she's not coming from a place of malice to not embarrass me or nothing. She genuinely wants me to succeed. So she's asking like. Did you knock all the checks out? To get Have it you really sat down? Do you really know how to do that? And because I'm who I am, I'm I'm taking I, I'm adding to what she said. Are you even funny? Do you know how to write? Should you even be in this business? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She ain't say all that. She's just saying, do you have a plan? And the truth was, I didn't have it. I don't have it. Like <laughs> as we, me and you talk right now, that's something I need to sit down and figure out. And I think for me, it was really hard to admit. Sometimes I just make stuff because I feel like I gotta be making stuff. Always gotta be doing stuff. But people that I follow, like Issa Rae and Quinta and Yvonne Orji, like they're strategic and the stuff they make, they catapult after that. It's not just making stuff to like every move was from what I see. Mm -hmm. But Insecure done well, not only set up Issa, but it set up uh, Jay Ellis and Yvonne and directors, writers, like Issa's career jumped off. Quinta's mm -hmm. Abbott Elementary, jumped off because she's done things very well. Exactly. So I'm like, okay, let me be more strategic than just, I gotta do something each year. So that's kind of, I mean, that's just one of the many ways she's really helped me. Well, do you have any fears as far as like taking on new fame and taking on Hollywood period of what it does with children? 100,000%. I think um, it's one, like my kids used to really be in the industry. Like my son played Buckwheat in a, in a Little Rascals remake. They used to be on Awesomeness TV. 
And I would see what happened with like Disney stars and a lot of those kids, not all of them, but a lot of those kids don't, they don't transition well into adulthood. Mm -hmm. They seem to have a lot of issues in the news, drug abuse, things like that. And like I was saying earlier, at the core of me, I'm looking 20, 30 years in the future for Thanksgiving, Christmas, holidays. Are we still a good familial unit? So my kids were like, they showed a couple inklings, like they didn't want to be in that industry like that. And we pulled them out. You just go to school, be a normal child. If you want to come back to Hollywood, it'll always be there. But just figure out how to be normal first and develop, you know, the, the right social skills, how to deal with people, how to talk to people and things like that. And then be an adult and you'll be safer. You know what I'm saying? You might not be perfect, but you'll be safer than if you if you blow up at 10 or 11 and you never get a chance to experience that life. Um, I also worry about like people uh, finding my kids and because they're fans of mine going too hard on my kids, finding their Instagram and stuff like yeah. people be going ridiculous Real on tough. people's kids. And it's like, bro, that's just a child at the end of the day. My mm -hmm. son's 16 and 14. Like, I don't want the craziness that I deal with to spill over into them because they didn't really sign up for that. Real talk. So I don't really tag them. They have Instagram, but I never tag them. I don't want nobody to find them. Like, leave my babies alone. You know what I'm saying? Just, and luckily, they don't be on social media like that. Like, at least social media that we use. Kids have their own things that are important Straight to them. Up. Discord and and all this other stuff. So luckily- Roblox. Yeah, Roblox. And, Fucking, uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Metaverse. My yeah. son was telling me they be talking in, in Google uh, Google Docs in school, so they can they'll be in the same Google Doc and they'll like I'll oh, type yeah, yeah, yeah. and then erase it and you see it yeah. and there's no proof of it. I was like, first of all, that's on some spy, you know, terror cell type activity. They just smart. But they're like you. Ne you think you working and stuff, and they chopping it up on the on the school having a whole chat, a whole chat. So stay over there where no adults can you just find you. Just on them. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> That was crazy, even though I'm loving the content. That's, <laughs> I just want you to know, they about to cut you up for that. They, them boys is fit to kill you for that. They gonna hate you for at least a week. <laughs> Boy, they finna be doing all type, finna be breaking all type of rules right. to let you live from that, man. <laughs> what lessons do you have from your childhood, like growing up that like influenced how you move as a parent? Man, uh, I think, <laughs> One is just like being present, right? Like my, my, I remember my grandma, we used to play Chinese checkers and she never let us win. Like she was like, I don't believe in that. You, when you beat me for real, you to beat me. So, but the, the memory I remember is she used to play with us. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of uh, family memories where it was just us. We was watching Star Search. We watching Sister Act 2 or The Lion King. So it's just not us with a lot of money or a lot of stuff, but we had a lot of good times. So I try to keep that probably the most important thing is that that family union is is strong. So we still take a family vacation every year, usually for spring break for the boys and Christmas as a family, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? One thing my dad always did, he always wanted to expand our view of the world. So he took us to an HBCU when I was a kid. He took us to Arlington Cemetery to, you know, just, just stuff outside of what normal kids saw. So for me, I just extended that to like, I took my kids to Amsterdam and Spain and Japan. So they see the world is bigger than the United States, or bigger than LA. Like you've seen different cultures and architects and architecture. We took them to Egypt last year. So mm. we could see like how old civilization is, you know, at the end of the day, they still like, all right, can we go back to the hotel so I can Straight get up. the game? Straight up. But I, <laughs> I hope later yeah, on in life, they'll appreciate you've seen that. You can never, you watch that on a movie now, you, be, you could be like, Oh, I remember we were in uh, Paris and we saw the Arc de And then Arc all the dots connect. Yeah, we watching John Wick 4 and they they go around the Arc de Triomphe and my kids are like, oh, we was there, right? But when we was there, y'all like nothing, like it wasn't nothing. Yeah, not But now John you Wick remember, because John Wick is in there getting hit by a car five times. <laughs> oh, now you remember the Arc de Triomphe. Because you could have been ducked behind the wall right. like John Wick. Huh? <laughs> right. You wanted to be John Wick all of a sudden, dude. That's how it go though. <laughs> right. So yeah, I think you just, as parents, you want to expand on what your parents did and you don't want to, uh, you don't want your children to have to sacrifice or suffer if they don't have to. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I hope like my parents, my dad, when I went to college, he was like, I can't pay for your college like that, but I can offer you, you can live here. Mm -hmm. So now I can offer you that I can pay for your college and you can live here. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to one up what my parents did and hopefully my kids can one up that, although it's going to be tough. The way things are going, 
it's really gonna be tough. I'm just being honest. I'm really killing it as a father. So <laughs> that is <laughs> great, bro. I took you to Japan. That is a shallow. I want to see what you hey, can fellas, do. that's a shallow. <laughs> He say, "Yeah, you're supposed to raise the bar. Right. Just don't think you, that's I'm a, a I'm pushing you. That's though. nice. Yeah, that's a great push. <laughs> I would have loved that. My dad, used, it's crazy. My dad played me in bat. Our thing was basketball. So yeah, he would here and there, like as I got older, would see my frustrations that happened, and he'd be trying to tell me something. Mm-hmm. And he's like, if you act stubborn, he'd be like, all right, I'll show you. Type right, thing. right. So we play a one on one, and it was like to me, I couldn't beat him, and it was like." When I zeroed in where it was like it started getting tough for him. Yeah. And man it was like, yeah, I'm a little, I ain't trying to hoop. Like, I'm tired. I, I never, I don't have the actual one-on-one memory of first. Of beating him? Like when he's like mad, like like trying to beat me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I never got that. That's great fatherhood. It's <laughs> great father. Now, no, but all the stuff you've accomplished in life. I never got that. When you sit down. It's like not winning the high school championship. Right. Like that irks me to my soul to this day that I didn't have a high school championship. Like That's great father. Once he Michael knows Jordan, that, it, Michael Jordan's son, AJ Romps, uh, yeah. uh, Chris Cove, and y'all fuck my shit up. <laughs> I just want y'all to know that. Full court boxing one shit. Ruined my life, just so y'all know. You I still just wanna, remember the people I want to get that off. Yeah, I want to get that off my chest. Mike was at the game. Fuck him too for that. He sat there, you know, everybody's attention on him is lit. They playing extra hard cause he there. But like Mike, you could have just watched on FaceTime or some shit, bro. Get a fucking Skype session going, nigga. You remember the defense bro, thing. It they pain, ran a it boxing one me, on you. Yeah, they guarded me full court. I was the tiredest I ever been, dog. I was so mad after the game cause I couldn't do my thing like I wanted. They wanted the ball out my hands. It was frustrating. Right. It was really frustrating. And I ended my high school shit. Like, I got hurt my junior year, couldn't even compete in the playoffs. Then my senior year, I'm like, I'm healthy, I'm ready. We doing this, they boxing one, and all the right plays was like, nope, you gotta pass it right here. That's the right play to make. Oh my God. And they was just, you know, they was playing well. They they beat us, (laughs) y'all ruined my shit. So that, and uh, my father never let me beat him one-on-one, like seriously though. Like, I felt like my brother should have been lined up, my mama should have been there, like nigga, this check is a up. triumphant yeah, moment, man. check this shit up. Like, check this mantle. shit up, exactly. <laughs> like, let everybody know that this my shit now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here now. Like, and he never gave me that. The I man, respect him so the much. Last, the last p- basket I remember the man scoring on was at the YMCA. I jumped up to block it, and he shot it with his left hand on the right side. Oh. It's my last memory of playing my dad one-on-one. It pisses me off to this fucking day. Not gonna lie to you. <laughs> if I never told you that, Pop. There you go. It is so it is so visceral yes. for you. Oh yeah, it meant something. You it, you got the photo. Yeah, it's because it's only because you said that when you said like the challenge of like you supposed to up because yeah. that's been my shit. Like as a son, like me and my brothers, like we all do that shit. Like yeah. you feel like nigga, I'm finna dad gonna know I'm the nigga, I'm the one. Like we all got that like friendly competition. Right. And it was like I, I thought of that when you was like you challenging your kids to like one up me, like right. go further, and I'm gonna push it far too. So go further, nah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm like, Pop, you did that. And then when it was time for me to get, like, yeah, I still pushed. But it's like, dog, you ain't give me that moment. Like, he do owe you Yo, one. bro. Like, and you he, can't get it he now. He knew it. He knew it, too. He ducked oh, up out of there. Man. Spun right up out of there. Laid me. <laughs> Never again. Never returned. No, oh, I went to block that shit, bro. I really went for, like, I'm telling you, I was, he, like, you know when somebody playing a kid? Oh, yeah. You don't know what it means to them. Right. Every person I played in my family, like, my uncles, my, anybody that got out there. Like, I remember my granny came out there when I was in, like, sixth grade. No bullshit. She came out there. We was playing around, and she, she, was, uh, she was showing me this. She kept doing this hook thing. Uh, playing around, just showing us like I could hoop, like, and I was like, challenge her, like, bro, I will play you right now, like, what is wrong with you, like, granny? my granny, but my granny could hoop, but I mean, just people, she used to hoop, but people's grannies don't usually do that, so what I'm envisioning is like my oh, grandma, no, my granny, and you play like back ball, in your grandma, but you gotta realize my granny though, like, you doing this to your grandma, my granny and my auntie played, so they wasn't like, you yeah, see what I'm so saying, she got it for like, real. yeah, they with that shit, like, yeah, we'll play you type shit, like my granny was like, I don't care, like I'll put my brace on and play you, like you better stop playing with me, like. 
So I like I remember these moments because it's like these are moments in life that meant something to me. Like you yeah. gave me that challenge. You ain't treat me like no look here. Right. My uncle got out there. You really sweating. You really fouling yeah. me hard. That means something to me. Yeah, yeah, I beat yeah. you while you was fouling me. Oh Absolutely. yeah. I remember that. Like <laughs> so it's like, hey kids, I know that feeling with that little challenge you just gave y'all. When you could pay it back, get that back, buddy. Get that back. Real oh, light too. Do God. something slick too. Just <laughs> Let him wake up and it just be a plane ticket to Japan. Like, uh -huh. aha. <laughs> like, but it's his one airline. Up. Oh, bro. Oh, yeah. So, wow. You ain't never did that. Look, look, one up. Look, oh, bro. bro. I, I said, so no, happy. it's even better to just send you. Like, <laughs> no, I sent you all the accommodations when you land. You ain't got to worry about nothing. And it's a PlayStation <laughs> in your room. <laughs> this would be an asshole. Since all we wanted to do was play PlayStation. <laughs> like, oh, bro. With a little, little, with a little pyramid sitting in there for him. <laughs> John Wick action figure. One up this nigga. Y'all got it. Uh in what ways oh, <laughs> in what ways um switching people's perception. Yeah. Um from social media start. Uh in what ways have you been faced with a challenge in that? Uh man, I feel like I feel terrible even saying that. No, like a social no, media star. Listen, I get it. It's it's definitely I want to say a billboard star. I like right. to think of social media as a billboard. It you really created is. your own billboard and people come look at it. It really is. I think the first thing, like I'm a stand-up comedian. That was probably the first thing I was really good at. Yeah. And I started stand-up before I did social media, before social media even existed. Uh, but what happened was I was in Tacoma, Washington, really like honing my craft. It was mm -hmm. Comedian Nate Jackson had a room and he used to let me get up there. And at that time it was just, people only had Facebook and there was no social media stars. It was just like- Taking it back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, eight maybe, oh <sighs> eight. Yeah, yeah, I was in high school, I was gonna graduate. Yeah, My, no Michael Jordan's son eliminated me that year. <laughs> we go right back to Fuck it. Fuck that year. <laughs> Jesus Christ, fuck that year. But finish the story, Jesus. So um, I was getting good at stand up, and then what happened was I was like, okay, this like being big in Tacoma is not really enough. Like I gotta be in order because the, the plan was I was I was doing plays at this time. Time out. What? Yeah. You said you grew up in Tacoma. I was in Tacoma. I didn't grow up there. My dad was in the military, so I spent thirteen years there. Damn. Yeah. So from sixteen My best friend, to twenty nine. She's from there. Oh really? Oh yeah. Who? who? From the tech from the town, Alexandria Montgomery. Oh. She played it. She played it. She played at Georgia Tech with me, and then oh, she dope. played it for the New York Liberty. I got drafted to the Knicks. She got drafted to the Liberty. Same. Oh year. wow! Yeah, it's, that's, that's my, super dope. Yeah, that's my dog though. Like two still, five three on still, me. Still to this day. <laughs> <laughs> oh bro, I remember your code. <laughs> swear to God, I swear. I, every time I see that area code, I feel like she lost her phone. Yeah. <laughs> she like I that's got a like two five three number. Yeah, on that's me right just now. I just used to her calling. That's amazing. There. That's like that's just my bad. The fucking no, story of that shit just. Oh so we were doing plays. Y'all call it the town, right? Yeah, the town. Even though the town, it's a whole thing. Like Oakland was the town. I just didn't want y'all to be disrespect. Like I, I remember when I used to be like, "Yeah, she's from Seattle." So I'm not from Seattle, dog. In Tacoma. There's in a whole Tacoma. rivalry there. Yeah, it's like a thing. It's a real thing. Same airport. Most people don't know what Tacoma. Same is. airport. It's the same airport. But it's a thing. <laughs> just let y'all know. They <laughs> all fly out the same Tacoma. airport, but they got an issue with one another. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know. It's very confusing. Just don't, it's a big deal. Just don't say they from Seattle unless they <laughs> really from there. All right, it's let's a get big it. Deal. <laughs> So uh, we were doing plays and we was gonna be like Tyler Perry and stuff, but like yeah. he he could move his plays around. Wasn't enough black people in Seattle or Tacoma to do no plays for more than one day. Mm -hmm. In order to make money, you gotta be able to do it for weeks or months or travel it. So Damn. yeah, we was talking, we were like, excuse me, um, if we can get big on the internet, we can go from Seattle to Oakland to LA, you know, Phoenix, all that Copy. stuff. We don't have to stay just We don't here. have to stay here, but we got to get our fans up. So that's why I started using the internet. And then what happened was I got big on the internet so much that people didn't know I did stand up. And what and a lot of social media stars, when they get big, the clubs were like, yo, pull up. You got fans. Like, they just want to make money. So people would go to the shows and they wouldn't be developed stand up comedians yet. So people would pull up to see them and they wouldn't be good. So now there was a stigma like, oh, he's just a social media comedian. He's a social media and like, he's funny, but that stage is real. And when people would come, they would hit me up like, I just came to support, I was sure you was gonna bomb. Like, cause everybody else, and they would name the people they went and saw who bombed. You so I tell had me to- the names or you? No, 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 no yeah. Snitch, I might work snitch, with these people. Yeah, you snitched <laughs> once, once an episode. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's gonna be cut out and put on TikTok. <laughs> Kev on stage said this nigga. Oh, bro. Funny. I'm just saying. I don't know who it is. You just but, know somebody bomb. Right. There's just some people. I've seen some people bomb. You know what I'm saying? It's a hard discipline. For sure. So that was probably the first thing. Like, I want you to know that I'm good for real and I actually did this for real. But to me, they are actually separate skills, right? Stand up comedy is a skill, social media is another skill, acting is another skill. Very few people are good at all of them. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I was a good stand up comedian, but I also know that in order to be funny on the internet, it's a different type of funny. Like sure. you need to be funny and up to the point and know what's trending. It's different other skills. But for me, it was just give me an opportunity. Like pay your little 25, come see me. If I bomb, you never have to come see me again. Hey, little 25. But I, pay, that pay that little, little 25. 25. <laughs> 25. <laughs> pay that. But what people don't realize, if they like you, they'll give you more leeway. So sure. if you already like me for my videos, they'll give you leeway. However, you ain't enough leeway in the world if you ain't funny for 45 minutes. Straight up. If they'll give you five. There's like the celebrity five. It don't matter who it is. If I like you, I'll give you five minutes. But after that, all right, I need to laugh for real. Straight Otherwise, up. I feel like I waste my time, waste my money. So for me, it was, a, it was about that. But now... It's becoming its own discipline, and people are starting to understand that. If you really think about it, man, if you like Denzel Washington and you watch every movie he does and every interview about every movie he does, you might see six hours of Denzel Washington in a year promoting that movie, including that movie. You might watch six hours of me in a day. Like last week, I shot a podcast, six episodes that was an hour long. My Patreon fans watched that from nine to five, took lunch. They took their own lunch, came back and watched it. And that was just Thursday's shoot day. And I shot for three, four hours on Friday, four hours on Tuesday. So you spend 10 hours with me just this week. So you, the, I ain't gonna the, lie to you, man. I do a lot of this podcast. So I'm not doing, like, <laughs> not, I've shot plenty of these. Like you're, you're better man than me. <laughs> <laughs> and we take lots of breaks. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, we eat food. Right. Uh, I don't know. We take COVID tests over here, man. We check the light, take some photo shoots. We keep it real chill, right. man. It's a hard working individual, man. Y'all better pay that little 25. <laughs> pay that little 25, yo. Pay that little 25, man. Make it six minutes, six episodes, man. But pay that little foot, pay, pay that little 25 to that man. Pay that man, man. Pay that man. Hey, we've been speaking on Tyler Perry a little bit. Uh, yeah. What would you say the key is to find a success independently? I feel like he's one of those guys. He's the he's the benchmark to me. Straight up. Um, he is the best at catering to his base mm. and not caring about nobody else. Tyler Perry might be the most criticized filmmaker that I've seen, and he don't care. He got to have writer's rooms. He should be doing this. He, Tyler does what he wants to do. He makes sure the people who are fans of his have something to watch on BET+. Plus in movies and plays. And what I've taken from him is you actually don't need everybody. You just need the people who really rock with you to really rock with you and then add to those people. There's whole swaths of people who are like, he don't never delve into this and I, and I don't care. The people who like me like this. So I'm gonna give them what they want. It's kind of like Trump in this sense, like he knew he lost half the country just from who he was. So he didn't try to appeal to the rest. He just be like, if you with me, I'm going to focus on you. And I thought he was going to lose the presidency. But then people who love him, they excuse anything Trump does. They'd be, you could see him shoot somebody. He'd be like, he ain't, I ain't see that. Or they deserved it. And that's yeah, how much they break love. down the law. And bro, any they'll make whatever needs to make <laughs> sense talk. so that he's right. And Tyler Perry has Tyler Perry fans and they love him. So that's really what I've tried to build with like the stage crew of like, just focus on people who really rock with you and make sure they are really happy. So. And you, and of course, I want to get better and make my stuff better and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, if my audience really likes it, you can build a billion dollar empire with just the people that rock with you. And, and then when he gets bored, he goes and does a different type of movie. He's in the Matrix or Star Trek or whatever I think he did. And then he come right back to his base. Straight <laughs> and he up. got sisters and, and bruh and you know what I'm saying? BT gave him a huge bag Man. and he be writing it and he really tunes out everybody else in all dissension and just focuses. And I think in the social media world, you really need that because you can be affected by the comments and criticism and Straight people up. be online just looking to tear people down. They don't have no replacement or nothing. They just want you to stop. Straight up. And he be like, no, nah, I'm not even on Twitter. I'm just making my stuff in to the tune of a billion. So that's what I take from him the most. And he creates opportunities for others and all that type of stuff. But 
he caters to his base yeah. amazingly, and he's yeah. he don't have he don't have to have, have he don't have to have nobody else. Straight up, it, it it's crazy. I was watching a uh, um, million dollars worth of game, and yep. um, Gilly and Wallow was talking about. It's so many people. What he says, seven billion people in the world. You're like, yeah. dog, you ain't got time to be worried about a thousand that ain't supporting you. Bruh. Like, you don't have time to worry about. You put out this video and only thirty five thousand liked it, right? And uh, uh or or thirty five thousand viewed it, and yeah. only a thousand liked it. Like, it's like, dog. As long as you putting out your art, you doing your thing. Somebody's watching. Somebody's liking it. One like, thousand percent. You know what I'm saying? Because well, I know I'm one of those guys that just I'm I'm a. You post all your videos. Yeah. Like I get to meet you today. It's like maybe I saw one or two videos, but now I'm gonna just let it rock. Right. I'm gonna just see. Definitely not eight hours with no. you. I, I love you to death. <laughs> but it, that's not for you. I love though. you, black man. <laughs> I love you, dog. Eight to ten hours, <laughs> nigga. You is tripping, tripping. You have me. You have me. <laughs> you is tripping. Hey, listen. I y'all some avid listeners. No. I, hey, better not be nobody listening to you about a bunch of me and all day like that. Hey, man, get yourself a break. Go to the bathroom, shorty. Listen, I get it. And hey, me and Ari don't need y'all to be that crazy. <laughs> Just like and subscribe. I promise you'll be okay. We'll be good. Like and subscribe. Oh, Support. that's hilarious. Yeah, you got to force it on yourself. To be, dog, that's crazy. You don't, like, you don't just get the cotton I, absolutely. mouth. God I'm tired of hearing and, myself talk. I get I be forgetting what I say. I'm at the stage where I say the same story. So many you don't say so many uh uh have so many podcasts like damn you might rewatch some shit and be like damn I did something. I don't even remember half the things I say. That's crazy. People send me clips and I'll be like, I literally don't. I just be talking, bro. Damn. But I know like when I worked at Boeing, and this is really like how I think about it, when I hated my job, I was looking for something to watch. Right. And if you didn't drop your podcast or your video, I had an hour of my day I was gonna kill because you posted your thing. If you don't do that now, I have to really work or fake work, oh, I'm pissed. Yeah. So I just, I don't take myself seriously. I'm just a welcome break when you should be doing something more productive. So you looking out for your, your I'm past self. I'm looking out for my past self, man. You hate that job, nigga. Let me close this door, put these headphones on, see what Kev talking about. Cause Straight I don't want nobody coming, bro. That's all. He it saw is. the same video as me. Man, that's the <laughs> funniest it. shit. That's it. Hey, oh, bro, I wanted. To, I was thinking that. That's how that's I was. All doing. it is, bro. Like that's I remember real. when I worked at Burger King, and I got a ten minute break. Let me watch a little video real quick. Ah, oh, nigga, crazy. I gotta oh, go bro. back. Oh, bro. I'm gonna make those videos for you to watch too. Or you sitting in that? You know, you get in the driveway. You don't want to go in the house. Straight up. There's a little seven minute period where you just smoke like, break, a little cigar. Yeah. yeah. yeah one, two. When you do that, one, two. let me see what Kat What are you about. talking about, man? This nigga this, crazy. Oh, bro. That's all I need. That's wrong. Look, this nigga crazy. Let me get on in this house. That's wrong. That's all. That's, that's wrong. all I got to do worry. for you. I got you, bro. I got, yeah. I, got, I, got, I got a little 25 for you, man. You make sure. You know what I'm saying? I got a little 25. Just give me a little 25. A little 25. You know what I'm saying? God get some food with the rest. You know what I mean? Whatever, man. On your man. journey so far, uh, who who's some allies, uh, uh, some people that have helped you with opportunities and uh, helping you to push past and get through with some more progress into this industry? Man, that's a great question. Nobody's ever asked me that. Um, LRG. LRG, man. Is that you, Lauren? You better produce. Ah! Black women be knowing. You see? Outside of my wife, who's done probably the most, I think uh, Nate Jackson on my stand-up tip he was really instrumental. He had a comedy club. He was like, go out there, do 20 minutes, rock out however you feel, right? And I didn't realize that's unusual. In LA, you get two minutes, three minutes, maybe five. That's crazy. Yeah, and I don't know how you even develop uh, anything. Yeah, yeah, how can you do anything? I don't know. You get three minutes with open mic where it's mostly just other comedians. Like, that was not my testimony. So I appreciate two years of him letting me do that. Damn. On social media, King Kiron, he was he was um, a social media uh, star we signed to All Def when I worked there. And he broke down the game for me from his like point of view. At this time, he was just killing, right? He's focused on acting more now, but he broke down how he does his videos, how he thinks about them. He like walked me through the game, so I did that. People like Spoken Reasons, I didn't like learn it from him personally, but just watching how he did like, I'm gonna do one amazing video a week, Dorm Tame It, doing the same thing, Issa Rae, I'm gonna do uh, this series that's so specific to me mm -hmm. and personal to me, and I hope people like it. So when I made my series Churchy, like you might not have grown up in the black church, but the people who grew up in it, they really connect 
with it. But I don't try to make that show for everybody. I try to make that show for people like me. Mm -hmm. So you, if you're experiencing this, you'll get it. But it ain't really for everybody to get every joke. So I feel like those people probably the most. Quinta, more recently, has gone from Instagram to BuzzFeed to, H to HBO to ABC. So just watching that growth has been really inspiring. But, you know, and, and again, she's doing something she knows. She's talking about uh, school and her mom was a teacher in Philly. So she's speaking about something she knows. So I think those people probably are who, who off the top of my head, other creators that really inspire me either personally or just the way they like handle their business. Right. I try to follow in those footsteps. Right. If you had to say, what's the, like, I wanna, cause you said it's the different funny, mm -hmm. like social media funny, yeah. stand up funny, <laughs> movie funny. Yeah, You get what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. all the different funny for those that are like, you know, if they aspire to do some shit like I say I want to be a comedian. I I'm because I'm acting right now, like mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I wanna be in a comedy, like right. you know what I'm saying? I just want the right writer, so <laughs> yeah. it's just really funny. Yeah. Uh like if you if you wanted to be a comedian, like what advice would you give somebody on the different funnies? I think social media funny, the key is the biggest key is to front load the funny. So the way I think about social media, you on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and you're doing this, you're scrolling, right? And you give every, you stop for two or three seconds to see if it's worth it. If it ain't worth it, you keep scrolling. In that two or three seconds, I either need to know what you're talking about or laugh, right? So if I'm scrolling and I'm saying, hey man, this is the time I thought I was gonna make to the NBA. Okay, what what, what happened, right? Because at least I'm interested. Or have y'all have y'all ever played uh, today's video? Have you ever played? I just thought about hide and go get it randomly. Because I was what? a kid, hide and go get it. You never heard of this? Oh, this is great. You heard of it, Lauren? Hide and go get it was like hide and go seek. But uh, when you found, uh, okay, it's gonna sound worse than it really was. This is getting crazy. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Lauren, help Lauren, me. Lauren, you see, I hello, LIG. So the idea was when you found the girl, y'all would kiss or hunch right. or do something, right? I never got to get nothing. I uh, didn't go get it. Yeah. It's insane. Right? So, Some I, little I, badass oh, kid. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Lauren knows about you it. You cheese it like a boy. You know exactly what this game <laughs> is, Joe. You so when I talk about it, it's hey, y'all remember playing hide and go get it? No. You either did or you like, wait, what is that? Or if you did, you like, yes. So now you listening and now you're gonna comment because it's connected wow. something to you. But I can't or be it's like disconnecting, so you wanna know or about you move it. on. Or or you're curious. Yeah, yeah, you're curious as hell now. Like, yeah, I was, like I'm I reading the whole thing, like, what? I didn't grow up on that. But if early in my game, I'd be like, man, I remember when I was a kid, but we used to play all type of games. One of the games, they not gonna hear what I'm talking about because there's nothing to grab their attention within three seconds. Like most people don't watch a video for more than three seconds. Video, post, tweet, we're just You doing know what it. I noticed that everybody figured out? The jump cuts. Yep. Cause you don't wanna waste no time either. Cut that air out. That's crazy. Cut it they out. don't even have a breath. Nah. It'd be like, I woke up, I put my shoes on, yep. I went into this, I went out the door, I went, uh, 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 fuck you. 1,000%. And that'd be a video. It'd be like, bro, what? Yep. But it's funny when it's done like that. Like, Cause you don't want no air time, right? You don't want insane, no, dog. cause you fighting for, and I realized with TikTok, I can feel my own personal attention span shortening. And these videos are minute long and I'm like, all right, I get it, 12 seconds in. Like how you getting it already? But it's because you know what? I'm, <clears throat> I'm done, but if it's something I'm really engaged in, yeah. I'll watch for five minutes. Man. You know what I'm saying? So that's the biggest thing. If you're gonna be funny, be funny up front, or at least grab their attention immediately. You know what's crazy? I let people cook. Do you? I let them cook. I don't let them cook. I let them cook. I got stuff to do. The reason why I let them cook is because <laughs> especially when I, especially when I go to see stand-ups, right? Mm -hmm. I like, I like giving the comedian a chance to like improvise. Yeah. Cause you may have a whole skit ready. Yeah. But if you do like in that formula, like you could come out there and feel for it and be like, ah, this crowd ain't gonna right. really right, know right, what right, the right, fuck right. I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh, I might say to y'all know this game and everybody say no. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like this could go real bad. <laughs> so it's like, I, I, I would look at, I, I would look at it and say, yo, I. You get at least five minutes just so you could call an audible. Five minutes. You get to call an audible. At five minutes, I could have seen 20 videos. 
But stand up is different because you're a captive audience. You're sitting there. You're not gonna get now up and on walk the on out. the on the on the Instagram. I'm you at least get 10, 15 seconds. Nah, man. Bro. I ain't gonna. You're do more it. generous than most. You just said you lose it at three, three seconds. If you bro. look at your data on your videos, like I'm a creator, so you it'll show you the analytics. After three seconds, it drops like that for most videos, especially like a video that don't resonate with people. I don't think I ever looked at my analytics. Uh, that's the other thing that most people don't do. I think I think I might not want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to see it. That I don't want to be turning people, my shit off. Oh, like that. people are out of there, bro. They have ruined it. Twenty-seven for second video. Oh, By yeah. twelve seconds, they gone. Cool. Just spit on my brand. <laughs> Fuck it. You say, man, they got out of here. But it's not to you personally. I'm it's fucking just with you. the way we do it. People ain't got time. They're well, like, bro, I got to go. So they out of crazy. there. I'm not like, you know what? I'm very in, in the present. My problem with the Instagram stuff, I'll get on Instagram and then get off Instagram because I'll get too in it. Really? See, I'm very, uh, I feel like I'm a, I have an obsessive behavior. Mm. Like I'm very, uh, this what I'm doing right now, and I'm all the way doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know I can saying? like I don't know how to undo it. Like yeah. it's weird. It's like, and I gotta complete it. Like right. I have to complete the mission that I had. So either I gotta look at every circle that's lit up green, close friend. Maybe I want to see my whole close friends. Maybe yeah. I want to make sure that my inbox ain't filled. I don't right. want to look at it's 32 messages no more. I don't want to look at, like that. I don't want to look at it no more. So I'm going through every one of them and everybody got to leave me alone. So I'm done. Like, and I get lost in Instagram where I'm just, now I'm just searching. Now I'm watching content. Now I'm on this. Now I'm on that. Now for some reason I'm watching every funny gospel video. <laughs> I'm like, bro, at the while I'll be like, what am I how doing? I yeah. How here? did I get here, bro? All I did was try and answer a couple messages Bruh. and now <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, now I don't know who I am. <laughs> like, now it's dark outside. Real talk. You're hungry. I'm like, Straight man. Straight up, I got a headache. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My kids is right next to me, knocked out. <laughs> like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> it's bad parenting. Like, this shit is awful, bro. Four hours in. This shit is crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, yeah. so maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe I need to do the two, three second thing because I yeah. I don't think I'll pick anything up with that, though. No, I, it's hard. It's hard. Two, three seconds, I don't think I'll like anything. No, that's how it is. And that's it's the whole swipe thing. Like, you swiping past oh, man, don't, don't start that habit for everybody, I'm bro. Tell, I I'm think you should just it. lie about the analytics. <laughs> just tell everybody that it's five seconds so everybody feel like they normal if they give a nigga five. Like, you just ask for 25. You go ask, you tell these niggas two, three? That's crazy. <laughs> He, if you want to win, you better put it put it up front, bro. I'm telling you right now, put it up front. Put your best joke up front. Don't save it. Real talk. Your best joke up front. Save Leave the second that. best joke for the last for the button. That's the other thing. If you see in the comments, your if your next best joke is in the last piece, and you see in the comments that joke, you know they watched all the way to the end. Because if you don't know, mm. you really win if you can keep them all the way to the end. I like that you really are business savvy with oh, this bro. shit. The, the biggest lie I have going is it's all about being funny. There's a million niggas that are funnier than me. There's probably a hundred I know personally in my phone. Infinitely funnier <laughs> in than my me. phone. Most of them. Won't plan it up. Won't plan it. Won't do the research. Won't look at it strategically like how do I maximize it. They just like, I'm going to just be funny. Being funny is the easiest part of the equation and the least important part of the equation. Well, that wife wore off on your ass. Bro, ain't she? Day, boy. She done wore off on you, boy. <laughs> like, hey, man, my friends in the phone. <laughs> nope. I can easily name you 15 oh, comedians are funnier than me. All you got to do is wait for your wife to tell right. you something right, man. All you got to do is just, just listen to her. Listen working to harder than me? Doing the research? No, nah, there's not that many yeah. who going to outwork me. And I low-key, I think that's part of like not being amazing at something. Like I want to be amazing at basketball. I want to be amazing at football. But when you see somebody who's really amazing, you realize there's some God given talent yeah, that you can't sure. outwork them. So to level the playing field, like Peyton Manning talked about this. He was like, he saw Michael Vick. He was like, well, I'm never going to be able to do none of that. So I got to be extra in the film room. Sure. And I'm going to have to beat him Mentally. with this. Cause I can't run faster or throw farther than him. And Mike Vick was like, bro, I wasn't in no film room. Like, them niggas can't tackle me and make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he admitted, like, he if he would have put the work in Peyton had, he probably would have been unstoppable. And I think most comedians have the Mike Vick thing. Like, they just be funny, but they don't be working like that. Yeah. And I think that's what it – and then that translates to this industry as well because like, when they pay you to be on set, 
They want you to be on set on time, even if they're not gonna call you for six hours. Shut up. And you really, and when they call you on six hours, they need you on that first take to be like you just got there. Oh, I just got out. I just got talked to about this for being late. Did on, you? On set at, at uh, <laughs> shooting a shot, and I told her, I'm like, y'all don't even got no hair and makeup. Like by the time I got there, I had to get off. I'd have took a nap. <laughs> In the in the trailer, I'm like oh, she just getting her hair done. I found out they pay you just so they can look at you. Oh man, they I, want you in that trailer. Just okay, he's here. I We're told her I, after lunch. I told her I say, Lita, man, I promise I know my lines though. <laughs> I promise I know them lines, baby. I know I'm a little late. Everybody a little shaking up. I, I, I'm here. I'm safe, and I know my lines. <laughs> I know them lines, baby. That's it. I know the lines. I don't know shit else. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, bro! I, I, real, just, I just got yelled at for that, boy. I swear that that trailer uh, life different. That's How the you thing, in there though, sitting man. down. People want to, they want to depend. And on in you. that trailer, I could watch all your videos. There you go. That's my thing for you, Yo, bro. When you be on on time, <laughs> and you on time, and you they ain't called you yet. Let me see this nigga Kev talking Kev about. Kev is on stage right bro, now. Work for just that moment just in time. For me. When they call you, you be done. That's cool. I'm gone. Real talk. I'm gone. And when you get on lunch, uh, let me see. Right back to your shit. Right back. <laughs> right, I'm gonna be right there. For you. It's probably gonna be a new video up when you get on lunch. I promise you, I'm gonna end up at this man in, a, in my story because I'll be like, "Hey, Kel, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three seconds of video. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I did it. I watched at least four of your videos on break. <laughs> I don't take my Scroll past that. 15 of them, just like you said. Because you didn't say it in the first two seconds, nigga. <laughs> Come on, man. Call me out if I oh, ain't got bro, you in three gonna seconds. It's going to be hilarious. Nigga, I that know was it's five coming. seconds. Because now I'm going to watch your content knowing that in my mind, and I'm, it's, it's just going to be great. Most it's going to make it that much better. Most realize that they don't even know that it's like that. That's raw, though. Yeah, you got to think about, like. But that shows me that you give a fuck about me. Bruh, Like, absolutely. you wanted to know about how my mind works. 1,000%. It's not just about the little 25. It's not just about the little 25. <laughs> it's more than that. You care for your listeners. I get it. <laughs> and now, if you cut my podcast, now we can chill. Real now talk. we can hang out. Because I talk. know you here for the long haul. Real talk. Now but we can have a video, glass of wine. That's my introduction. Mm. That's like a highlight clip. That's like, oh, let me see what this is. Then Real I can talk. pull you further in. Further in, now I can do this in podcasts. See, I thought I was in. doing it, putting the thumbnails up. You getting there. Oh, you just told me I wasn't you, there, you though. Getting there. He said, you getting there. It you all just matters. It all there. matters. <laughs> like, you get in there, you just <laughs> not there. It all matters, man. Yeah, I'm going to tweet this nigga. Are you there yet? <laughs> <laughs> Are we there yet, my dog? <laughs> Damn, no, but it's it's crazy because I, I there's always a method to madness. Yeah, like, man. It's so many. Uh, I was watching an interview the other day of somebody uh, interviewing Lil Pump. Mm -hmm. I know that's random as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was talking about um, people coming up to him, uh, people in the industry, mm -hmm. and finally getting a chance to talk to him or be around him. And them expecting him to be like this, like doped out druggy right. vibe and all this other. Yeah. He's like, I'm sitting there like white eyed, sober, like right. not doing nothing today. Like yeah. today, I'm not partying at all. I'm calm. I'm able to deliver, talk to you regular. Like, but he was like, they just <laughs> were thinking this is some young kid yeah. that just made it. Yep. And you listen to even uh, Russ. Russ is like telling yeah. you his plan. And he's like, bro, I, I was doing it for a while. It was just madness. And he right. said, then I knew. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, take the steps, and it's just cool to hear like, you know, I got to hear from young guys, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Now I'm getting to hear from you, and then, you know, it's really from your wife, right. but I, but it's but it's you, you know what I'm saying? We, you are one. <laughs> I already know how it go, put in the ass, man. put in the ass, like, you know I taught you that anyway. Listen, Let's, give him credit where straight it's up. due, I, man. I love that, I love that. Um, yeah. As we move into you pitching uh, your TV shows and your bigger pod projects, what are, what are you most afraid of? Well, I don't even want to say. No, nah, fear is good. Okay. I be afraid of people being able to tell me no, and it really is no. Like, if in my mind, like some stuff I can't even, either I can't afford to pay for it, it wouldn't be wise to pay for it. Right. So I really need your bread, <laughs> right? <laughs> I need the 25. Need that. But if, and then if I'm pitching, when they say no, bro, it's a pass, it's a pass. And that's it. And then you move, and I, this happened a couple of times, two or three passes, 
that idea is gone. Because mm. now they done told other people, yeah, this is in the market. We Kev came in, blah, blah, blah. You pass two or three people, four or five people, sometimes it really be like, all right, we need to pitch something else because that project got some stink on it. So that people, I hate somebody being able to have control over what I want to do. If I got to pitch you and you say, yeah, then it can be. And then even if that, but now because I gave you the money, now if I say I don't want that actor, I'm paying. So we ain't going to use that actor. And I'm like, no, nah, but I want that actor. That actor is good. They're best role for that. Because that's what happened early in my career. A, a company had bought a pilot that I was directing and they, they wanted this actor and that person. They cut this line, cut that line. And then when it was time to buy the series, they're like, it ain't funny no more. I'm like, but y'all took everything funny out of it. You took the funny actors that we wanted and you said no. And now you say it ain't funny. Like if you would have let me do what we knew was good. But when somebody hands you 300, 400 grand, they not trying to hear nothing you got to say. They want to see what they want to see. So I think that's my biggest fear or frustration with Hollywood is like when you're pitching, whoever pays, saves. So (laughs) when you pay, they're they're, like when on my stuff, I'm paying for it. It's what I want. On you, if you bought it, it's what you want. The almighty dollar. Bruh. And it's so frustrating because some people get to the point where they take your money and it still be their way. But nobody's like that when they first start. But I got this uh, this money tree on the top of my arm right here, right? <laughs> and it falls around like the whole like family vibe around. Yeah, right? yeah. But it's like to play on that idea like people being like money growing trees, like they don't understand it at all. And it's like, right. even as a kid, I grew up thinking I knew what money was. And it's like, mm-hmm. you seriously don't know what it is. Like, and your, pe- your people will tell you that, like grown people will tell you, well, you don't, man, this money shit, man. You don't, right. take your little ass, stay in school, <laughs> right. and keep putting that ball in the hoop, buddy. <laughs> keep doing the little raps. About. Yeah, keep doing your little raps and your little notebook and shit. Do all that, shorty. What you do? Yeah, don't be worried about this. You know what I'm saying? This is grown man shit. <laughs> Soon as I get it in, it go out. Yeah, I don't even right? know what the fuck you tripping for. Like, sometimes I feel like I just make money to hand it to Uncle Sam. Straight up, like I'd be like, and this is sound ridiculous. You'd be like, I don't really want to make no more right now because it's just gonna go right to him. I'm not gonna be able to do nothing with it. And I know that sounds crazy, but but I just be paying so much in taxes. I'd be like, nigga, what? Let me do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, y'all don't me, even do stuff I want to see. It's how nice. It's how polite you said it. Let me do something with it, <laughs> please, bro. Like just me. I just I earned it. Just me, Kevin. Yeah, I earned it. Oh, and even if I gotta put it into the city infrastructure, let me fix a pothole on my street. <laughs> Dog, just let me, can I have a choice? Yeah, I, I think that's what y'all doing with it, right? Dog, they gonna pay the police. Is it, look, is it what y'all do? Is it what y'all <laughs> doing with it? What y'all doing with it anyway? Dog. Cause it's a pothole everywhere in Chicago. That's what I'm saying. I'll tell you this shit right now. They, they, <laughs> hey, <laughs> never bringing my cars back to Chicago. I don't know why I did that. Seriously, F- cracked the rim immediately. Oh, that was snap. The, some of the dumbest shit. <laughs> I, I, you know when you gone for a while, you just yeah, forget what the fuck going on? like. Yeah, man, all them taxes we pay. All them taxes my mama and daddy paid my whole life. We was great citizens. Now, no. that, I think, now that I think about it. They take your money and buy missiles. you be like, nigga, I, what, am I least, do? what am I gonna do with a missile? I'll see, I'll finna say shoot them motherfuckers too because y'all just got them for no reason. I'll finna tell them, but don't do that. I was just, I was a little razzle down. Just saw John Wick, everybody just pawned me. You know? The military like, now Trump said shoot them, so bro, we shoot them. Let's blow these men. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't even shoot them into the ocean. Leave the sea animals alone. We ain't got time for them to come on shore fucking us up. Like, oh, snap. We can't win that battle if y'all yeah. ain't noticed. We ain't winning that the battle with the sea animals. I don't know why y'all keep trying it. We not winning that. Y'all might as well stop fishing. Uh, what excites you about the journey? Because I asked you your fear. What excites you? Oh, man. I feel like what excites me is the ability to create stuff. Like... At some points, I'm really just still a little kid going, got to making my own stories of my own men. Like, oh, this guy can't, you know what I'm saying? But like, that's my most exciting thing. And also, second to that is creating opportunities for other people. Like, I feel like for me, my best gift is with with what I'm given, I'm I'm opening the door for other people. So on my on my app, Kevin Stage Studios, 
people get their first directing credit, first series regular, their first acting role, their first time saying lines. They in the background, they finally get to say a line. They get to cut that out and put that on their reel. Like mm -hmm. all that stuff matters and people being able to be like, usually I'm second assistant camera on Kev stuff. I'm first assistant. First assistant, I actually get to DP. DP, I get to direct. Mm -hmm. Like everybody gets to do one more thing they want to do because it's my stuff. And even if you only work with me a couple times and that helps you go do what you really want to do, then my job is done. So getting seeing people go out and be better as a result of, you know, collaborating with me, it'd be the greatest. Like I'd be like, I was instrumental or I played a part in your story. That's you know what fun. I'm saying? So that's why I know I gotta keep going. Cause when, sometimes I feel like, bro, I'm just I'm done. Not I'm quitting, tired. but like it's exhausting to do all this. I'm gonna just do stuff for my family. But then when I see people be like, Kev, man, your real help me get this audition. This audition, I booked Fine. this series regular. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? And they be really talented and they just haven't had an opportunity. That's what keeps me going. And to be able to do that on a bigger and bigger scale is why I keep pushing as hard as I do. Man, shout out to that, man. That's yeah. dope. There's a lot of people that, that do that. Like, I don't like people that make it and then like take the book and like. Oh, nah, bro. Like, bro, come on, dog. Like. <laughs> There's uh, room for more people, bro. Up, bro. Like, come on, bro. Take the house key over here. Let copy me it. in, bro. <laughs> Let it in, bro. You be like, knocking, man. Let me in. Talk. Or, or you gonna have to answer at three in the right. morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> you gonna have to answer later on. <laughs> hey, let me tell you what, too. Selfishly, the more people you help, if you ever fall, the people who you helped, they look out. They gonna look out. Look so out. at worst, I'm ensuring my own success. At best, I've created opportunities for a lot of people. At never worst, drive without insurance, bro. Let's that's what I'm talking about. We would never drive without insurance. Never drive without insurance, bro. My my daddy was an insurance broker, bro. I don't even rent a house without insurance. That's what I'm talking about. Never do that. <laughs> well, I would just do that. <laughs> my brother, insurance broker, finish it with the left. That's oh yeah. RCA. Oh yeah. With not a not a patch of hair on that bitch. <laughs> Shiny, oh bro, <laughs> live me. But it gave and never played me again. Duh. Ain't that crazy, dog? That's cold, man. <laughs> cold blooded. Yeah, bro, Ooh, that's wee. tough, man. Oh, wait, that's a hell of a way he gonna sign it off like that. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Hey, man, we like to ask all our guests. Yeah. Uh, well, it's my brother's favorite question. Okay. Uh, he wrote the question, he's just not here right now. All right. Um, what are you working on to improve in your personal life right now? Oh, that's a good question. Everybody says that, and that's his favorite thing to say. That that's is, a good question. Like, man. He, he, that's his favorite. But I, I, it actually became more of a staple for us because yeah. I don't think we realized when he first put it up that it was a good question. No. I think we all was just like, "What?" Like, we was okay. That's what Ari wants to say. Cool. Yeah, but then yeah, yeah. As we kept asking it at the end, it just hit. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't get people to ask you, you that. Really don't. You really don't. Man, I think I'm working on the most being a good teammate, mm. right? I think for the first part of my career, I have I was a ball hog on a team where I needed to be a ball hog. Straight up. And that's going to get you awards sometimes. going to get you all-stars. It's going to get you accolades. But if you want to win a championship, sometimes you got to defer Mm -hmm. You're going to have to trust. And every good sports person has to do trust. that. Trust. You're going to have to trust your team. And for me, I got to trust and let people fail. Because I'll hold myself accountable when I fail. But at the end of the day, it's just me. Sometimes I trip too hard if somebody else fails. Because I'd be like, if I made, if I had the ball, I would have hit it. Right? And I, and that's a weak way to trust somebody. Because you really you really only trust them if they're right. And that's not really trust. Mm -hmm. You really gotta trust somebody and let them sh you know, sink or swim. So I think now, at this phase of my career, they, I know the double team is coming. Straight up. I'm passing out of it and I, I just, I don't need you to score for 35, but you gotta hit this one. And Straight if you up. miss it, I got you, it's still the right I gotta play. be cool, yeah. I gotta be cool, we'll get him next time. I want you to be efficient though. I want you to be <laughs> <laughs> I want you to shoot it at a 45 clip. Bro, that's what I'm saying. But I got you, though. We'll get him next time. You know and I think if I can master that, then the next 10 years of my career will set up the rest of my life and my children, children, children's life. If I don't, my ceiling is, I'm closing in on it. That's fine. And I don't want to go on that, so I really got to recalibrate myself. See, in my personal life right now, I'm working on understanding Nobody grew up, they weren't there. 
Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. some of the some of the burdens and some of the expectations, the disappointments, anything that I put on other people. Yeah. I'm trying to be more conscious of like even if I'm just like I can't rock with you no more. Yeah. Like I'm just trying to be like not uh so cold about it and understanding like we're all very different and yeah. we're all supposed to, there is people that we are supposed to be around each other for a year. Right. There are people that you're supposed to be around, uh, get into it with, get back right, right. so that you understand a relationship 100%. like that, that that is like, you know, there's ups and downs, we're gonna get into it, we're gonna clash, we're gonna do this, but yeah. I, I only do that with a person I care about. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like I'm not arguing with a motherfucker. I don't care. Right. <laughs> right. You start arguing with me, like who's he? He's still talking. To me. Right. I'm out. Like you're still here. Whoa. <laughs> Awkward. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like so, I'm like I'm trying to get to the point now where I'm like understanding of they didn't like like if, speaking in your context. If they didn't make the shot, it's not because he don't love basketball. Right. Right, he loved basketball too. Just as much as you. It's just your psycho ass might have decided to do this many hours and that motherfucker can't do it. Maybe right. they don't have internet over there because right. they just moved in and <laughs> they, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, it's just like, bro, reason. it's so many things that yeah. go on. They didn't have this parent or they don't have an uncle that gave them the talk that I got right. that got me narrow-minded as hell on some workspace or the, yep. they don't have the wife that you got that told right. them to plan it out. Like, right. they didn't take that cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> like, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. And you ain't running it for them, so you gotta be cool. You gotta just be cool and let them have it. And yeah. I'm at that transition in my life, so I feel like that's what I'm working on, just not being so riled up over some shit that it's like, dog, you can't control that. They a whole 100%. human being, like, yeah. they gotta go through this emotion, that emotion, this, this, and this, and then they could talk to you. Yep. They that's gotta real. go through this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and then they won't uh, uh, ask you for uh, uh, you to support them and post every like you know what I'm saying like I'd have had people tell me like bro you ain't post I'm like bro I did post it it just didn't do what you wanted it to right. do like, I posted it though it's up there <laughs> they like, hit them in the three seconds yeah I, but it'd be like it's not my fault like I want it to win like it's like you see I want to make the shot right. I can't make these people pay that twenty five. That little twenty five got to come out they own oh, my account. You hear me? I can't make them pay that twenty five. <laughs> gotta get that twenty five on your own. <laughs> Before we let you go, is there anything else you want to promote? No, nah, man. I mean, this is just amazing. This, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, wherever you have your social media, search Kev on stage. Find me. Uh, get to know me. Give me that three seconds. Then give me that twenty five. I ain't gonna lie, I watched one of your uh your comedy specials where you did a preview of like a little bit of who you were. Yeah. And my boy, it took longer than two, three seconds, so you full of shit. This is one of my favorite videos of you motherfucker. Uh you was wrestling your little boy. Yeah. And uh you could see how into it he got like, oh, you think you think you just gonna do this on camera. Right. Like, oh, he reversed it. <laughs> you took your took your phone and put it down, put your wire off. Like, yeah, you finna get it. <laughs> He thought you was done. You laid on top of him like, yeah, damn shit. <laughs> thought it was sweet, nigga. No, damn shit. Yeah. I was like, but that was like my favorite moment. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's why I'm just like, don't don't hit me with two, three seconds I and mean, then give me that nice, smooth intro. Hey, man, at Kevo stage, as always, thank you for rocking with Iman amongst course, men. Man. I'm your host, Iman Shumpert. Give it up one more time for my man, Kev on stage. Let's go.